good morning got another video here originally i wasn't going to record i woke up had a bit of a sore throat but i took some tylenol and some advil and i think it was just irritated from something i don't think it was um you know sickness or anything you know minor inconvenience kind of sets back the day a little bit but i've been talking a lot about certain critiques of american culture and especially the corporation state and the way it's affected all Americans in their way of life. And to really illustrate what I think is the root of the problem and just what has happened in this country and to these people, you know, there's a lot of history behind it. You know, we're talking about the force of millennia and centuries really, but if I could illustrate it, I'll tell you a story. And the story goes, I was at um, a New Year's party at a friend's house and I saw another acquaintance of mine and he works for a record company, right? And we got to talking about music. And this was a few years ago, mind you. Maybe maybe even right around COVID or right before COVID or right after COVID. But it was somewhere in that area. And we were talking about music and how the industry had changed. And there's specific reasons why the industry, the music industry has changed so much and how artists do business, right? Uh, but what, what, um, what we were talking about is I mentioned to him that yeah, once upon a time, you didn't have all these avenues for artists to independently release their work. Yes, there have always been punks. That's always been a thing. Do it yourself has always been the root and the heart of any kind of art, right? And that's where it all comes from. You know, the corporate model was attached to that, right? So it's very parasitic in nature and always has been. And so for the majority of the music industry's history, it took most of the money, often completely not either not paying or paying ludic, especially for how much they were parasitizing, how much money they were stealing from the artists. They kept the lion's share. And you, again, they all, everyone justified it how they did, and they still do to this day. But it's not a bad thing. Well, it's bad for the artists who had the potential to consolidate you know, attention and uh, their affect in their music to affect so many people so as to garner, you know, millions of sales. And so once upon a time, uh, a lot of the music in the music industry came from the music. But as things changed, as it became more corporate, as MTV, which was a corporate production from day one, right? A bunch of boomers figured out how to sell out their children with irresponsibility is what happened there. So they sold them a lie, they sold them a fantasy, they brought them the corporate world, right? Uh, in the guise of, doesn't everyone want the cocaine party and all the girls and all the, the, the fires and the explosions and we're pouring champagnes on tits and we just got, we're eating caviar off ass. You know, we're just, we're going wild here, right? What's the movie, The Western World in Decline, The Decline of Western Civilization? right it's real and it was real um, but in the music industry so once upon a time the, the money came from music right artists made music and then that would make money the corpos took the most of it and they still uh, you know they generally do wherever they can right that's the name of the game it's competition it's um, making money off other people's products but where it changed was once upon a time yes people didn't have all these avenues to do it yourself like social media so there wasn't this glut of um, artists and music and products and services and everything else that has flooded our market in all areas not just art and music but at the very least with the gatekeepers there came a certain enclosed arena a shrine uh, a place where it could uh, where the culture could live and breathe for a little bit rather than just you know memes and music and things you know, you could think of like Baby Shark, like the commercial endeavors more recently, think of Baby Shark or Gangnam Style, any of these kind of memes that became po more popular than any real music or real art, you could say, um, in a way that the internet made possible that just had never happened before outside, you know, even novelty songs in America have always been a thing and, you know, always been a production uh, for a long time now, yet not like that, but Anyway, back to how the culture used to be is that the centralized avenues of distribution and marketing, and again, just the corporate stranglehold on everything, including the artist and their profit generating venture, basically they ran it all out. So when that failed to make money, you know, you can think of the Napster lawsuit and um, 
uh, all the, the music industry trying to stop the inevitable change, right? Say, you can't disrupt our business models. Let's sue MP3s. Let's sue Napster. Let's stop the, let's try and stop the future. Let's try and stop the inevitable. Let's be cavemen, right? Let's, let's be greedy cavemen because this is what greedy cavemen do, right? They want to strangle it like they just can't let go they never let go so then when the music industry changed and record sales died right uh, it just changed form and then they try to figure out well then how can we again keep as much of the revenue as possible so even though these things change the way it's changed our culture is that there's no longer an enclosed arena or shrine so then think about that from the perspective of the wider narrative, the wider culture, the wider media. If everyone gets their news from different sources, and by the way, I'm not trying to be, this isn't reactionary, this isn't atavistic, this isn't saying, oh, these things are bad because of change. It's like when magazines were new technologies, there were Americans writing newspaper articles, right? The old models saying magazines are gonna destroy our society. Everyone's gonna go read their own magazine and everyone's gonna speak their own language or do their own thing, right? So. You know, there's always been this kind of inevitable atomization by way of technology and culture and diverging interests and giving people more options, right? That's what the market does, it gives them options. That's not the same as a healthy, happy culture um, or one that provides the meaningful things that people need in their lives. So, you know, if you can see the analogy here, if using the corporate structure of uh, the corporate structure that attached itself to music and art, right? Because I'm not calling that art. I'm not calling that the, we call it the, it's called the music industry, but it's more like, no, there's an, there's a corporation of people that attach themselves to artists, right? That's how this stuff has always worked. Um, and then the artists, right? Because they don't have the power to either do it, do the marketing themselves, get the same amount of exposure. You know, it's a sim, you can say, it's a symbiotic relationship, but the way the business generally works with how greedy Americans and uh, American business people are, um, you know, cause everyone, I, I say it all the time, you know, they're just, everyone's entitled here. Everyone, you know, they've been, they're either taught to be generally kind of subservient and servile, you know, that's the good American who's always doing the good thing. And then there's the other one who's just kind of like, yeah, there's this big trough of people and you can just feed off of them. But to bring it back to how the corporation has fed off the artists, I think it's more parasitic than symbiotic and only more in recent times, maybe, you know, and then I guess you can also see why it's like, why do rappers and all these other artists, why, why is the dream to start your own label, right? It's to get free of the influence that is actually holding you back, right? It might have been a boon in the beginning. It might have helped in the beginning to get something started. But now that there's no central arena, now that their marketing schemes don't work the same anymore, oh, you can see it in the music, uh, the movie industry too. There have been so many movies lately that have been hundreds of millions of dollars that are just a wash and a bust because again, everyone thinks they can market the same. Everyone thinks they can do the same thing over and over. Everyone thinks they can just keep running the same, you know, rapacious business models. And you see what happens in America. Everything gets run into the dirt. Everything gets cloned and imitated and sold out. You know, it happens in the music industry too. Copycats are a thing, uh, you know, because part of that, prefabricated model so this was this is to get to my point here part of that prefabricated enclosed cultural model is that what it did is it provided a means for the you know the music and the art and the things to live and not just that but it also hmm, kind of lost my train of thought there it it provided a grounds for it to live and it also, you know, and it set a standard, right? Even if you could say it was kind of arbitrary and unfair and certain things, you know, because how many, like for every Jimi Hendrix that makes it, how many Jimi Hendrixes die in the gutter or never get discovered or they suffer or die or something else happens to them, right? Or suffer some sort of horrible tragedy or they overdose. Any number of things happen here. But the former model, um, the problem was it's prefabricated, therefore repressive, therefore it fits the square pegs and the round holes, even though that doesn't work well. And then that applies to music and that applies to people. So now within our wider culture, you can see that that former sh uh, shrine, that former arena, well, everyone's just left in their own little bubbles in their own little circles. Most people are self-referential. Most people don't know a lot of people. Most people don't, you know, they're not connected in a lot of wide circles, you know, because our culture is very simple and uh, totalitarian in the sense that most people, right, their job is their life, is their 
uh, wife, their business, their this, their that, their kids, like everything kind of tends toward one tendency and that's business and networking and marketing and everything's a product and all time has to be monetized. No one can ha uh, be, they have to have, right? And the have to have is necessary because everything's expensive here and everyone's poor. So it's really, you know, it's hard for people to make a living. So now that cultural model at, at the very least where yes, everyone was poor, but they had more similar taste, more curated taste. Yes, it was all prefabricated. Yes, even the music sold on that market became increasingly prefabricated and manufactured, right? I talk about this America as the quintessential manufactured culture, right? So that at least gave people some unity but now everyone's speaking their own languages. Everyone's got their own magazines. Everyone's in their own, uh, finds their own music in their own niche, right? And this is where, you know, tastes and trends diverge and you can say that's fine on a market, but look how people's ways of life have been disrupted. Arguably, there is no way of life that's not a commercial, right? Everything in life, in our lives is a commercial and everything is commercialized and sold to us. And then um, from there, it's kind of like, um, you know, this is what I mean when it's totalizing, is that there's no way out of it that doesn't just put you at odds or put you apart or make you seem like the crazy one, right? Like it's just, there's very few avenues for people to work and to create your own thing is to compete and to compete as well. Again, there's a reason why everyone wants to try to stop the competition. They create a business model and then they go, oh no, no one can touch it, no one can disrupt it. And everyone else goes, you wanna make a bet? You wanna see how this works? And then it happens. And it's a good thing that it happens because you know, uh, challenge and change is the name of the game. The idea that you could just do the same thing over and over is asinine, it's brain dead. And in America, again, the there's this definition of insanity here that it's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, right? So when our way of life has robbed everyone of their rootedness, their connectedness to one another, any kind of group or singular or more shared notion of um, harmony or group feeling or feeling a part of, right? It's hard for Americans to do that in a family, let alone a small community, let alone the country, let alone the world, right? To feel a meaningful member therein. So when you see how nihilistic and cynical our culture is, understand that that comes from people being like tumbleweeds, people being lost, people having no connection to themselves, one another. They have distorted images of the world and themselves, right? When I say America has a self-image problem and an image problem, our image problem is that our country is embarrassing, is that, um, you know, our anti-intellectual culture is embarrassing, that, um, that, that our schools created it that way, that people created schools to create it that way is embarrassing and gross, right? And, and, and uh, it really, um, it shows you how, how much they wanted to lower the standards of values and the qualities of people's life. And it's been a controlled burn pretty much ever since in these prefabricated rapacious model that took and produced as much as it could, you know, and it did well for the people who knew how to utilize it. And all of us who have tried to figure out how to utilize it, because that's what everyone's doing, right? Uh, from the scam artist to the businessman to the artist, everyone is trying to figure out how to make their money, how to live their lives. So it's not like these struggles and these problems are anything new, but to the degree that our culture has been blown out, to the degree that there is no centralized arena and story and meaning and purpose, that there is no place for people to connect that isn't commercial, you know, and generally free from commercial constraints and commercial lies and commercial necessity, you know, where it's all just fabricated and manufactured, you know, and rep repetitive, um, where it's not conducive to thought and feeling and the kind of expansiveness and power that people actually need to feel in their lives and the connection to others, you know, and with that, there is one's identity, one sense of self, their sense of meaning, their sense of purpose. I think just a lot of things that kind of differentiate us is uh, from the animal that make us different. And you can see in the modern day, a lot of people want to move backwards. A lot of people, their answers are, you know, from days, weeks, months, uh, years, centuries, millennia ago in history. And then other people, you know, they believe in progress and the progress is not what they think it is, right? It's everything I'm describing. It's being, you know, progress is putting your culture on the commercial rack basically and ripping it apart. And then, um, you know, benefits a handful of people in total. And then from there, um, everything else is moving backwards. And you see that all animals, they create something more than themselves. They create the next generation and they try to 
you know, they, they add to the knowledge base or the experience of their genetic culture. And then, you know, with us as humans, our intellectual and our emotional culture, our social emotional maps, our lives aren't just physical, they're psychological, right? All these things matter to us and it's very complicated and human beings are very complicated. So you, I hope with these analogies and these stories, you can see what has happened to our people, what has happened to our culture. What is wrong with them? Why is there a loneliness epidemic? Because people are isolated and lonely. Their physiology is blown out. They've been stressed out and nervous for years. Their way of life has been under attack and threat from internal and external sources. You would be stressed out too. It's like putting an animal in a cage and just shaking the cage and you know, ask them how they feel. Yeah, you'd want a Xanax too probably. You know, so I understand that it's not even anyone's here, here's fault. They were born into it and then they're prescribed it and then they're sold it and then they buy it. They buy it, they do. Um, Anyway, I hope your day is great. You know, I can't, I don't know if you can see this. There's a dumpster behind me. It's trash day. Just taking out the trash here. Pretty soon, next few topics, uh, soon I'll be getting into wellness. What does wellness look like and sound like, you know, in people and potential friends and family, you know, and then from there, uh, we're going to get into what I've been excited to get into, which is literature, literary analysis, and why that matters for the psyche, for one's emotional and social well-being, and also how it improves, to improve one's reading and writing, is to improve one's very communication with oneself at the least, and potentially with others if you practice and you learn the skills. Anyway, um, thanks for your time, thanks for your attention, I appreciate it, hope your day's good, take care.